Hey, good morning. Hi. Ready for the July check-in? Oh my gosh, yes. There's is, a lot to talk about here. Yeah, yeah. If, if I feel uh, if that high sounded overwhelmed, maybe it is a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's July in a vegetable garden, huh? Yeah. So carrots. Yeah, I. So you maybe remember seeding these with me. Uh, yeah. And 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 they are they're ready for harvest. They're looking great. So let's dig them. I was trying to before this just pull some by my hand mm -hmm. and uh, you know the tops just snapped off so really the best way is to use a, a digging fork to harvest oh, them. Oh yeah look at those look at beautiful those things. Carrots. Of course you get some funny ones like that but yeah. that's just you know the professional growers get these too they just uh, these are the ones that get turned into baby carrots. Right, they whittle okay. them down uh -huh. but these are gorgeous carrots right here. They're and perfect and they remind so, me do you remember the variety of this one again? Uh, I believe it's mocum. Okay okay uh, good. But I'm not 100% certain. And uh, so the best way, easiest way is with a fork. Do you um, harvest, you know, you have this whole big patch of carrots here. Do you harvest from any one particular place or? It was, it was purely, the reason we started in the middle here, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was just where, excuse me, where we happened to be uh -huh. when we started digging. Okay, I, I, so there's no real reason to yeah, dig from one place or another my particularly. My wife Sarah I started here and I asked her why she didn't. She said, oh, I was just, I just, I don't know, <laughs> I was right here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't no. matter you look the for the answer, yeah. You look for the, you can sort of see the shoulders uh -huh. um, of the carrots through the, through the dirt and you can sort of go for the size that you're looking for. And that's how you know when you can start to see their shoulders and... And like yeah I guess the shoulders do show up more as they get bigger but uh -huh. they, they um, you can start to just tell that the shoulder of the carrot is the diameter that you want it to be in and that's how you know it's it's ready yeah. it's just size it's and they'll just keep and growing and growing and yeah yeah if you want to eat them bigger you wait longer or okay. if you want to eat tiny little ones and have them on, as a garnish on the side of your plate pick, you pick them real small okay so when we planted these yeah. in the rows um, they were pretty close together they were. and um, it looks like, you know, we've got this really lush patch of carrots here. Mm -hmm. I always hear, or I've often heard that, uh, you know, people should thin, mm -hmm. but these are sown pretty thickly and the carrots are so big. They are, they are. And it's true that if you th sow them too thickly, then they do, they just choke each other out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we did, I ended up not having the time to thin and yeah. I was a little worried about it, but it worked out okay. And they're not huge carrots, but you know, you can see that they sort of, jostled around and pushed each other aside and some are tiny in there but right. not, most of them are decent size and so we'll probably just compost the tinies that did get choked out right. but um, sometimes it's just not worth the effort to do that or um, or it's worth the effort to take a little bit more care in sowing to get it a little uh, thinner. If you have a good germination rate, then you don't need to th I mean, Yeah, if exactly. You, if you sow correctly and then have good germination. Yes, and sometimes I sow a little bit extra just because I sometimes don't get the greatest germination. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. well, it looks great. These are all, this is a good car carrot crop, isn't I'm, it? Oh, I'm psyched about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> And the beets, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're ready. They are, and thankfully they're a little bit easier to to get out of the ground. You just have to give them a little yank because they are not deep rooted at all. Uh huh. And uh, oh, well, of course they have a tap root, but the rest they just pull nicely. Yeah. Most of them are. Uh, most of the crop is above the ground. But yeah, we're getting some nicely sized beets, and you know, rather than compost the small ones, all the little ones here, mm -hmm. we actually uh, make into a like a. A, not a tonic, a, a, a juice, a beet, oh, beet juice. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yum. And we mix it with water, lemon juice, ginger, and apple, and it's like, oh, oh it's, it sounds it's, delicious. It's so good. Do you blend the tops into it too? We don't. Just I just, the, I, just, just I will compost the, right. the, the nice. tops. Yeah. And beets, you can tell when they're ready. I mean, they really do show you their size. They easily. really do, yeah. yeah. So I, right over here, I've got some bigger ones even. Uh -huh. Oh, wow, like, yeah. Like some actually legitimate beets right there. And does it matter? I mean, is it just about a matter of you know it does if they get too big are they not as good tasting oh, or no. woodier or no, no they're, they're all mean, the same they're yeah as, as, the woodiness is more uh i see them usually if they're like not watered well okay they'll just they'll they'll, they'll end up being woody and tough mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you water them well they're they're good and then it's just the size you want you know do you want to chop them up into cubes or do you want to you know boil it and peel the skin off and have a whole small beet on mm -hmm. the plate it's okay. uh, it's really up to up to the you know 
And I know it has, uh, th these particular beets have the leaf spots. Yeah, they do but... this Circospora leaf mm -hmm. spot. And um, this is, it's maybe worse right now than I've seen all year. Mm -hmm. And which I guess that makes sense because it just spreads from the spots to the other leaves as okay. we get rainfall. And oh. we just had a big two incher, yeah. you know, last week. Um, so some spots are worse, some spots are better. I'm not terribly worried about it. It's, the leaves will tend to um, a new flush I've seen grow back. I can see some even coming, uh -huh. come, new ones that coming are clean, up down. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, hopefully they, they don't get infected also. But um, the, the the plants have made their beets almost all. Already, so it doesn't so affect the crop. It doesn't usually affect the crop. Perfect. Terribly, no, especially right. in the home garden. Yeah. What a beautiful eggplant. Oh my gosh, this thing is. I was commenting to Sarah that this is like. The, the plant in the garden that is like doing living its best life it is <laughs> it's doing looking the, pretty healthy the best, it's the best specimen of its species you know? oh it looks terrific <laughs> and it has so many little um baby eggplants coming I know, on i know i'm excited nice. um beautiful I, I mean i'm excited about eggplant and also it's not my favorite vegetable but yeah we, we grow it because we like we used to have i think three maybe four eggplant mm -hmm. and then we're like why are we doing this we don't eat nearly this many then we cut it down to two right and two's enough for your family one oh where, this, this is, is just one. one. Oh, i thought this was two in I here know, okay i know yeah yeah, so one is just enough for one a family. One is almost too much, also. So yeah. we are. It's, it's. We can't go less than that, though. Yeah, <laughs> can't grow half an eggplant. No, you can't. <laughs> and yeah. then, and then right next to it, you have um, uh, some uh, cayenne peppers. Exactly. This is a, a Korean like drying one, uh -huh. um, and it's 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 a. Uh, it's got a lovely heat. It's called Amazing Two. I, I like the. I really like this uh, cayenne pepper, and then some. Uh, green to red bell peppers okay. in a row here. We use, um, we've got actually a big stretch of green to red peppers here. Okay. And we freeze these um, red for the for the use over the winter. So how do you know when to pick a pepper like this? Well, just, if it's green, then uh -huh. you would just, I usually give it a little squeeze. And if it's got, it should feel firm mm -hmm. and um, you know, hard. Mm -hmm. If it's got any give to it, then it's too early. Okay. They start out really thin walled, but then the walls thicken up and they just really get, get more stout. blocky. Yeah. Yep, okay. Exactly. And so then you, and then you just wait for the color to be fully red and, and is the redder it is, the sweeter it is. Yeah. Or yeah. No. Once it's fully red, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's good. And the, the, the difficulty is that you end up losing a fair number of peppers to rots or d conditions like sun scald where if this if there's not enough foliage on the pepper the sun hits the pepper and mm -hmm. it just like fries the leaves a bleached spot on it anyway that's why red peppers cost more than green peppers because you lose like such a high percentage i didn't know that red. i just so, thought i was always doing something wrong well and they take more time in the yeah, field so it's right like, yeah uh anyway it's uh yeah it's it's difficult to get them there but here in the home garden even if they get that sun scald, I'll still use the pepper. I'll just chop that part off and use the rest of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's doable. Yeah. So your trellising is so interesting on your peppers here. On the tomatoes, everything is very tightly woven mm -hmm. in one um, row. Uh -huh. But here you have, um, it's a little bit different process. Yeah, yeah. I make sort of, just here, I just want to keep them out of the pathways. Mm -hmm. So I just pound posts in around the perimeter mm -hmm. as sort of close to the row and then I made a belt around the whole thing to just or corral to just keep them in yeah but what I found is that they will sometimes then lean the other way and they'll just like crush each other, each other. Okay. or the peppers will end up on the ground and then you know bugs will chew on them more uh, that way so I want to keep them up that way too so I just did an X in between uh, within also, and that more or less holds them up. And so it's just a little grid. Yep, and I tried to do that early-ish, and you know the pepper's architecture just sort of fills out, mm -hmm. and so sometimes those X's will end up in the middle of the plant and just sort of hold it up. And, and that's fine too. Yeah, yep. And so you have two rows. Did you do them at two different times, uh, or two layers? Did you do the bottom layer yes, and then wait two, for them to grow a while? Exactly. And then did another. Will you need to do another layer, or I think I will, uh -huh. but I probably I don't know if I'm going to need to do another um, diagonal. But okay. I probably will need to do another uh, corral as they the grow, outside. since yeah. it's only July, and they'll keep going for yeah. a couple yeah. more months, probably. Yeah. Okay.
So you put this trellis up. Yeah. Um, was this in June? May? I feel like, yeah, probably May. I yeah. think it was two times ago. Maybe right when you planted. Yep. And I'm going to be putting more up on either side as our new successions come up here. Because you succession plant your cucumbers. Yeah, I think we do six plantings oh, wow. in a year. Okay. And this is just our first one that's really coming along right mm -hmm. now. The second one is pretty delayed, I feel like. It's down here right now. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's coming. I, it, it, um, is underwhelming for sure <laughs> <laughs> but i've got uh these nice uh cucumbers oh, coming yeah. on right here i'm a little uh this this uh thing where it's bigger at this end and smaller at this end mm -hmm. this is not gonna um, fill out and be a fully plump cucumber this is telling me that um, conditions weren't right for pollination and that can be either too dry uh it can be um you know, poor insect, you know, uh, population. Po yeah, but, but that's uh -huh. not here. We, yeah. we, we, with all the flowers that we have in this garden, we have an abundance of pollinators. Uh -huh. So this also happens, generally speaking, as the plant gets older. And this, these plants are getting older. So it's, uh, it, it's probably a nutrient thing as the plants okay. get older. Too. And they've, they've used up the nutrients in the soil. Mm -hmm. And okay. so if I was continuously feeding potassium, you know, or side dressing, then it would probably be a little bit better. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to tolerate it because uh, they it's, taste fine. They taste fine, and, yeah. and I'm not trying to sell this cucumber. Right. But so I, how frequently do you? How far apart do you succession plant? I usually go every two weeks. Okay. And that's it, you. I could be watching for a certain growth stage and probably getting a better, um, you know, space uh, oh, and okay. spaced out because I do end up with, especially in the early season, them bunching up on each other. Okay. So we did actually skip our, this year, our second um, planting that was okay. on the calendar because I was like, wait a second, I've, I've, I've been in this, I've followed this script before and it's, and it's not paid off right. or it's paid off too well. So um, how do you know, a couple questions about, um, how do you know when the best time to pick a cucumber is? Oh, sure. Well, it's the same as, as anything. It's the, st the size that you want. And I know different people like different sizes of cucumbers, okay. but where is that one in here that I, here we go. This one's really nice for, uh, I'll take, pick it off here. This one right here is like oh, that's so beautiful. nice. Yeah, um, that's perfect. Some, I, I think it's, you know, eight inches, nine inches long. Mm -hmm. And some people like them to be, you know, a bigger, plumper uh, mm -hmm. cucumber. You end up with a bigger seed cavity that way, mm -hmm. but you, it is bigger of, for sure. But this one's just nice for snacking on. It'll be nice and sweet. I've seen a lot more in the stores lately, these little snacking cucumbers. Um, it's a different type of cucumber than this. This is a quote unquote American slicing cucumber. Um, those are more like Lebanese or beta alpha types. Mm -hmm. And they're, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to get some of those seeds and grow them because my kids just can't get enough. And I think they're just going to come out here and just snack on them off the trellis. <laughs> Perfect. That's what yeah. you want. Exactly. That's what you want. And so when a cucumber um, plant has uh, sort of the, the reason you succession plant is mm -hmm. because they sort of fail after a while. Yeah, yeah. And so when it's um, <clears throat> exceeded its lifespan, well, how do you know that? The, the, it just, the plant just kind of dies back. The pl or or it just all the fruits start looking weird like this, okay. you know, or they increasingly weird, and then and then at some point I'm just uh, I don't want to. It's easier to cut one that's straight like this than one that's curved in a, in a U shape. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I and, and the other ones are are giving at that point. So right. I uh, just yeah, my experience has shown that roughly every two weeks right. is good. Okay. Um, and I don't plant generally after I think. Uh, I think we've got one more planting to go. Um, this is one, two, three, four, yeah, five, and I skipped the, the, the one of them. So uh, I think middle to end of, Ju of July, if you plant after that, they just won't really mature in, in time. time. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. One last thing I want to show you is on these um, newer cucumbers here, you can see that they're turning ye yellow and sort of brown and shriveling up. And so we've got this section of vine where they're all just not looking great. And these are ones that we talked about poor pollination, poor right. pollinators, poor water, all the different reasons. It could be the smoke in the air that we've been experiencing here in the Midwest. Unclear, but this is something that people across the region are seeing this summer, this um, just you know, two week period where the new fruits are not pollinating there and therefore they just, the plant says, mm, you're they just done, shrivel up, shrivel and up and drop them off. off. Yep, yeah, exactly. So these fruits are not going to be, to make anything. And there's nothing you can do to 
to really change that. No, if not if it's the smoke, but yeah. if you just keep the water regular on these things, mm -hmm. um, feed them nicely uh, through at the beginning of the season, you know, then it should be and, and have good pollinators. That's um, the best you can do. That's the best you can do. So these strawberries, serious rabbit problem. <laughs> no, uh, big rabbits. Yeah, yeah. no, I uh, th it's, you know, strawberry season is done. The yeah. strawberries, we had a, a halfway decent crop this year. It wasn't mm -hmm. a great strawberry year, but um, to have a better crop years going forward, renovation is good. And so, um, you know, these are not matted row, but if you are just growing in the ground, a person is, uh, you know, the recommendation is to mow them off till uh you know so that you've got a narrow you know band of strawberries and and all the daughters the runners that have gone out and, and planted in mm -hmm. are, are are removed because they can easily choke each themselves out over a span of just three or four years so here um, again these are not in here for that long but i want to remove any diseased leaves by mowing them off they will grow nicely now for the rest of the summer and um, by removing the runners on the sides also i am preventing them from from just there's a lot of uh there's poor airflow some foliar diseases mm -hmm. can can take hold so generally it's disease management and so that i'm not um uh so that i'm not having a really just rank growth throughout the year here okay so since last time you were here, I have been trellising regularly these tomatoes. Right. Yeah. And I was gonna, you know, we were gonna do it today to show it, but uh, it's the morning and there's dew and I want to keep my hands off of tomatoes and a lot of crops, honestly, when it's wet because that moisture can spread disease and I don't want to do that. Our tomatoes are already, I've lost one here to a disease. I'm not certain exactly what it is, but I am worried about a couple others. Anyhow, uh, about weekly, I am trellising this. At this so you're point. adding a layer of, you're adding another layer of the Exactly. Twine. I would probably tie this one up right about right, right here. There. And it would go back and forth up. between. Yep. Up uh -huh. one side, loop it, and then right. back yep. up down here. All right. Well, it'll, and the, the tomatoes look uh, healthy and huge, and they're all standing up really straight. Yeah. Exactly. That's the so goal. I, yeah, exactly. I try to keep everything up because we're trying to cram a lot of vegetables into this garden. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, that looks really good. Well, thanks for showing me the update. Yeah, of course. The pumpkins are getting huge. They really are. And so the pumpkins actually technically are exposed already. And uh -huh. these ones under here are winter squash. Okay. And I cover them to protect them from insects, both cucumber beetles and squash mm -hmm. vine borer. Mm -hmm. We are um, not past the uh, risk uh, time for those pests um, and squash bugs are just coming out. I've seen yeah. a few of them already, but what I am going to uncover these for is because they just are too big underneath. Yeah. And if I leave them, they're just going to get hurt in some other way. And the pumpkins are starting to grow out between here and are going to cover this row cover. And that would just be a mess to uncover if right. I waited. So of course. we're going to do it. We're going to take the risk. It's time. And yeah. Let's see. And also, you know, ideally we do this right when they would start flowering and Let's take it your way, Kristen, here. All right. And nope, not flowering yet. But I've got butternut and I've got delicata and I've got acorn squash back here, I believe. And we used straw to keep the weeds down and also the straw is to keep the, the fruit once they come out or sorry, once they develop, we the straw is for the fruit to lay on so they don't get all muddy. It's and so tidier. That we have clean fruit. Nice. Exactly. I think it's well, a beautiful they look patch. Beautiful. It is a beautiful patch. They look so healthy. <laughs> Thanks. They are definitely ready to come out though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's so fun to see what's happening here every month. I could come every week and see something different, yeah. I think. Thanks uh, for giving us a tour today. You're so welcome. I enjoy showing it off.